um, but yeah, so now, now like you, you guys are the first class that I have since like uh, about eleven o'clock. So I, I, I kind of shut all the the streaming software down, and then you know do some some work and stuff, and uh, you know make some worksheets and all that fun stuff, and then now I have to restart everything. And I always forget how much time it takes. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so I've got uh, I've, I've got a couple of questions that I want to cover today. Uh, so we'll start off with piecewise defined uh, functions, uh, but just know that we're I, I'm not going to uh, yeah I'm not going to like quiz you on, on that stuff. Um, it is it is cool though. It is interesting to sort of think about functions in that way. And if you do plan on taking calculus at some point in your life, um, piecewise defined functions are. Um, are pretty important. So uh, yeah, why don't I just start with, uh, and I'll just tell you what piecewise function, piecewise defined functions are, and then um, and then maybe I'll do just one of these, and I'll, I'll try not to spend too too much time explaining it because it is it is important stuff. It's just not um, it's not as far as I understand. I don't believe piecewise defined functions are on our curriculum. So I'm I'm just gonna in the interest of time I kinda wanna skip it if, if it's not on our curriculum. Uh, but uh, I'll just tell you what they are. So piece wise functions. Okay. So this is a way of getting uh, many functions many functions into one. Okay. So you've got several functions and then boom you kind of just squish them all into one sort of mega function and the way the way you would do that is you would say okay this is my function f of x okay and f of x is equal to several different things maybe it's equal to some other function when uh, and then you would have some kind of interval okay so like when x is between these values uh, then, uh, so maybe I'll, I'll actually write when x, when x is in this interval. So if you know you have something like this, uh, uh, like you have you have a, your function g of x under certain conditions of x, and really what it's talking about is the domain. So different different parts of the domain get assigned different functions. So you could have this when x is in a different interval and you'll you'll notice that I put uh, some dots here uh, so these dots represent that there, there could be many different functions all in one um, so basically what 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 it is it, with respect to um, absolute value functions is so we if, if we wanted to we could we could look at an absolute value function and I'm not going to bother writing it like an actual one. What I'll do is I'll, I'll sort of just make like a sort of a, a mock one. So they look something like this, right? Something like that. Okay, so this would be like the absolute value of a quadratic function. Now this kind of looks like two different things. Like let's say that this, let's say that this function is equal to, um, uh, I, I should keep it blue actually because the function itself is blue. So this function is actually like the absolute value of f of x. Okay, and in this case here, I'll just say here f of x is quadratic. Right, this is a quadratic function, and we're taking the absolute value of it, and that's that's often what they look like, right? Um, so. Uh, another thing that we could do is we could say that all right, well we have um, we have these x-intercepts here, right? So so let's call this um, um, I don't know. Let's call this point point one and point two. Uh, point one is actually here. Let's call them p and q. P and q. So this would be the point p. This is the point q. And this is going to be uh, well like x one and zero, right? And this would be x2 and 0. So different values of x, uh, but the y value is uh, at 0, right? Because those are the x-intercepts. So if we wanted to write this as a piecewise defined function, well, what we would do is we would say, okay, well, um, in this case, I'm assuming that, that the original graph of f of x 
looked something like this. Like let's just assume that in the question this was the actual uh, graph of f of x and then this part represented the, uh, the sort of the, the mirror image part because that like this part would be negative so we would flip it up to be positive. So let's just assume that that's, that's what it, it, it was because in the other option would be that it was like this, that that was the original function and then we are reflecting this portion right uh, so, so this is going from negative to positive so that would be the other option but we are going to assume in this case because I'm just kind of making up an example without giving any details I'm just trying to paint a picture here um, we're just going to assume that the original function f of x the, the quadratic the, our original function was positive or, or pointing upwards I should say so uh, if that was the case then this is this is how we would write uh, our function f of uh, our function as a absolute value function. So we would say that f of x is equal to, well, it could be equal to several things. It is equal to, um, or sorry, the absolute value of f of x, the absolute value of f of x. So this is our, our, our absolute value function, where our f of x function is just a quadratic. It's not the absolute value of a quadratic. So the absolute value of this quadratic is equal to, well, we would say in this portion right here, like when x is less than x1, right? Like when we're left of this x-intercept, well, we would say that this is just the regular old f of x, right? It's just f of x. That's just our, our original function. And we would say, so it's f of x when x is less than or equal to um, x1, right? When we're left of that initial, that 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 uh, that first x-intercept, and then uh, the next portion is this part of the domain. So we've covered this part of the domain, right? And then now we're onto this part of the domain. And what's happened here is we've flipped it. And the way we flip it is that we we take the negative value of each each of these numbers. So we would say that um, we would have negative f of x. And of course, I'm just using f of x, but in the real question, maybe maybe x uh, that f of x was equal to like f of x. I don't know. I'm, again, I'm just sort of making up an example on the fly. It looks something like uh, it was, you know, x minus five squared minus three. Like maybe that's what it was, um, right? Maybe that's what what that was. So in which case, we would actually be writing this in here. Right, so so this f of x thing is equal to this expression, and then the negative expression. We would actually go out and calculate what that negative expression was. So we would say like, oh, that's negative x minus five squared plus three. Oops, plus three rather, and that's that's basically what this function is, right? So we're saying, okay, so so from from here to here, it's the same as as this function. From here to here, it's the same as this function. Okay, and so let's just say we when, and then the way we write it is uh, x1 is less than x, which is less than x2, because that's going from here to here, here's x2. And then finally, on the, the rightmost part, then we go back to f of x. So there's two ways of doing this. One way would just be to say, okay, well, we're back to f of x when x is greater than or equal to x2. So from this point forward, we're off to the races. Um, the other way of writing it is just to say, oh, well, I already wrote f of x. So I want to say, or when x is greater than or equal to x2. So that would be the other way. Both ways would be perfectly valid. They mean exactly the same thing. Um, and I would say that this is a little more concise just saying, okay, well, those are the two options that we have. So that's what piecewise defined functions are. I don't think I really want to jump right into it because we don't really have to. And it, it, it's, I don't want to say it's a confusing topic, but it takes time to fully understand this. So from, from this point forward, we're just going to sort of ignore the piecewise defined functions. Although it is really useful and, and piecewise defined functions do come up a lot in calculus. So if you do think that maybe one day you'll be studying calculus, then, then maybe go back and take a look at piecewise defined functions because for one, I think they're pretty interesting and they, they kind of make uh, math a little more like fun and you can really start to create really creative looking functions and graphs and things when you when you have piecewise defined functions. Um, but uh, yeah, we don't, we don't have to do it, so we're gonna skip it. 
Okay, so that was that was that. Um, okay, where are we? So it is okay. So three forty-five or sorry, two forty-five. We have half an hour. So I hope I can do as many of these questions as I can with you, and I'd like to give you guys an opportunity to try these. Um, so okay, uh, here's one. So right. The vertical asymptotes, vertical asymptotes for the reciprocal function, reciprocal function, uh, y equals 1 over x squared plus x minus six. Okay, so I'm, oops, uh, I don't want my calendar. I want timer. Okay, so tell me the, uh, the vertical asymptotes for the reciprocal of this function. Um, I'm going to give you one minute, 30 seconds. So I'll give you 90 seconds starting now. Let's give that one a shot. Okay, um, so this question is equivalent to asking for the non-permissible values of this expression, right? So, uh, and that is pretty much equivalent to finding the roots of the quadratic that is located in the denominator. So really what I'm, I'm doing here is factoring. So I don't know if you remember me saying that factoring is important, but like how many how many sections of this book have we been factoring quadratics for now, right? Like quite a few. So this is really important stuff. Um, uh, that factoring that is, factoring is very important and it does not go away. You continue to factor things in calculus uh, quite a bit. There's a lot of factoring in calculus. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do some factoring. Um, so I'm gonna factor uh, x squared my or plus x minus six. I think that the lucky numbers are positive three and negative two, right? So that would be x x. Okay, there we have it. So this is equal to zero when x is equal to two or x is equal to negative three. So those are the uh, vertical asymptotes. And those are actually the equations for the vertical asymptotes. Because remember, this is actually a line. We can graph this. So if we were to graph this, this would actually be, um, well, uh, if x equals two, then that would be like over here. Maybe I'll do it in a different color. So there's, there's x equals two. Right, and then x equals negative three would be over here. Pardon the blue line, that's actually supposed to be part of the axis here. I'll fix that, there we go. Okay, so there's the, the other line. This would be uh, x equals negative three, right? 
So uh, those are actually lines. So I think it's interesting that we use the same notation to describe the non-permissible values, right? Because we had non-permissible values. Uh, but then those non-permissible values actually correspond directly to the equation of the line that represents the vertical asymptote, right? Like if we were to graph x equals 2, all of the values on, the, on, the, on this coordinate plane where x is equal to 2, well, it's basically saying the y value doesn't matter. So you can just go up, up and down uh, at your leisure, right? So you just whoosh, whoosh, like any of these values, the x value is negative 3. Any of these values, the x value is, is positive 2, right? So um, yeah, I just thought that that's kind of neat. Um, all right, so I was going to share a picture that I just took of a graph that I want to, okay, how do I share that again? Okay, I'm going to airdrop it, right, come on, come on, you can do it, third time's the charm. Awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and here it is. Great. Um, and then, oh, actually, I want it on the second page because I'm running out of room. So here, let's try that again. There it is. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to go crop because I don't want all of it. Too bad I didn't actually um, increase the contrast and stuff and make it like black and white or even like switch the contrast so it's in dark mode, like everything else. But this'll do. Um, <clears throat> so what I'd like us to do is, um, well, on, on the, in the actual book, they ask us to do um, some, okay, so in the book, they want us to do three things. I wanna throw in a fourth thing. So it's asking us the domain, the range uh, and the equation for the vertical asymptotes. Okay, what I want to do, I want to throw in one more thing. Um, I want us to uh, graph the reciprocal of this function. So basically undo the reciprocal, like, like, or in other words, I guess what I want to, I guess technically that's not quite the same. What I really, what I, what I really actually am interested in is this is the reciprocal of which function? Hmm. That's what we're going to, that's what we're going to try to figure out. This is the reciprocal of which function? Well, let's let's see if we can get to the bottom of that. Um, so I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a few minutes for this. Um, maybe okay. I think the domain should probably take 45 seconds. 45 seconds. Uh, another 45 seconds. So let's let's call it I don't know two minutes for the first three, and then another minute. So let's do let's do three and a half minutes. Okay, I'm gonna do three and a half minutes for this. Um, go. And if if you're like almost done and I'm about to cut you off then just say hey I need another minute or something uh, and I'll, I'll hold off
All right, are we good for time or uh don't want to cut anyone off. No? Okay. Um I will assume we were all okay because no one is yelling at me. So um Oh well, I've got another video running. Okay, weird. Okay, um Great, let's do the domain. So the domain, we have pretty much um, all the values. So in our in our coordinate plane, uh, all the x y values are fine. So they're they're totally fine to 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 evaluate the function except at zero, right? So x can be anything except zero because we have a vertical asymptote there. So uh, let's go ahead with that. So the domain, the domain is, uh, well, I'm going to use uh, uh, interval notation. So I'll start at negative infinity, go to zero. I don't include it. I take the union, start at zero again, go all the way to positive infinity. The range is pretty much the same thing. In fact, it's exactly the same thing. Um, so we, we never actually hit zero there. So we'll do the same thing. So the range, the range we get negative infinity to zero union zero to positive infinity awesome and let's see here uh what else do, so we did domain we did range the equation for the vertical asymptote so the equation is x equals zero right so x equals zero that is the vertical asymptote right there you have it um and then finally uh, this is the reciprocal of which function. So let's give that a shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start finding some key points and I'm going to find the reciprocal of those points. So right over here, this is the easiest. Uh, here, I'm going to choose a darker blue. We'll do this. So here is um, here's a, a point that's important because it crosses the point y equals 1 because the, the, the inverse, or sorry, the reciprocal of one is just one. So that's a nice key point. Um, next up, I've got, uh, well, I think it's uh, right over here, also at where x equals five. So that's, there's some nice symmetry there. That's where x is equal to five. So that would bring us down to one fifth. So one fifth is about right there, and then, same with over here, I've got negative one, or sorry, I've got negative five, that's where x is equal to negative five. So let's try one, or negative one fifth, which is right about there. And then finally, uh, at this point right over here, this is again where y is equal to negative one. So the, uh, the reciprocal of negative one is negative one. And if I draw this line, this is, this is a nice straight line here. And so, so this is actually gonna be fairly straightforward to graph. Let me try to make a nice little graph of it. I wonder if maybe I should actually start using a ruler. I think that some programs have like a digital ruler, but I'm actually going to use a, well, not it's actually not a ruler, but it's more of a book. Oh yeah. Heck yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Actually, I want a little bit longer. Okay, let me try that again. Okay, I'm excited. This is a new technique for me to actually... Okay, I mean, I guess I've got the geometry thing on. Let me try one more time. One more time. Ah, yes, haha. -ha. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, beautiful. So there's my, there's my graph um, of the, the original function that I took the reciprocal of. And uh, let's see here, what, what's going on? Well, uh, I know I can see here that the, um, I'm gonna just go a little bit thinner here. So I can see here that the uh, y-intercept is at zero. So uh, zero, zero is my y-intercept. And it looks like the slope, the slope here is, what is the slope? Um, well, it looks like I'm going up by one. So my rise is one and my run is one, two, three, four, five. So my, my slope is rise over run. So that would be 
1 over 5. So the equation would be y equals, well, slope, which is m, or 1 fifth, 1 fifth, x plus 0. I'm not even going to bother writing 0. So it's just y equals 1 fifth of x. So isn't that cool? Just by looking at the, the, the function itself, we are able to determine where that function came from using pretty much the same process that we used to calculate or, or to graph the reciprocal function. We can do that same process to go backwards. Um, and just to make it a little more legible, I thought maybe I'd do this. I wonder if this would make it more legible or less legible. About the same, so whatever. Um, okay, so that looks good. Uh, let's try another question. Um, I've got this one here. Okay, I'll do the same process. So take this picture, share it with myself, bring it to my iPad. There it is. Okay, awesome. And then now I'll go back and get a new page, do some of this, some of that. There we go. And then this, and then that, and then crop. And then just crop it down so it looks nice. And I think we're good. Okay, good enough. All right, uh, so same thing. I want us to do the domain range. Uh, here, let me get a uh, different blue here. So I want domain, and that's too thin. Domain, range, vertical asymptote equations, and uh, I want the original function. Oh, gee. Okay, um, again, this time I'm gonna give you three minutes, so slightly less time uh, as the last time. So three minutes starting now.
Okay, let's do this one together. So my guess is that um, if, if, if any of these questions were to have given you any troubles, it probably would have been the last one. Um, but we'll, we'll get there. So uh, let's talk about the domain. I'm just gonna do these rather quickly. So the domain can be anything except in this case, one. So we have a gap at one. So we're going from negative infinity to one, not including one, and then go all the way to positive infinity. The range, well the range is all the y values that we have. We don't have any negative y values. This entire function is above zero, okay? So the range is, uh, it starts at zero and goes to positive infinity. Uh, equations of the vertical asymptote, well, this is where x is equal to one. So this is x equals one. And the original function, so this is where things get a little more fun. And again, I'll just do it right on top of here. So let me just make this nice and big. And okay. <clears throat> So it looks like, um, well, let's, let's start off by, by thinking about this vertical asymptote for a second. So if, if, this, we, if we have a vertical asymptote here, it's because the original function had uh, an x-intercept there. So let's go ahead and mark that x-intercept. So I'll write it right there. I, I think you guys can see that okay. Yeah, yeah, that looks fine. So there's, there's the dot right there. Um, now let's start looking at the uh, reciprocal values. So uh, the first reciprocal value that I'm going to look for is when y is equal to 1. So I'm looking for intersections on this line that I'm drawing. So right here and right here. So those values stay the same. So I'm going to mark those. So these ones stay the same like that. And then uh, let's see what else I have. Um, well... I have, uh, what am I looking for here? Uh, well, I'm just gonna sort of estimate a few things. I think that this looks like about halfway. So the, the reciprocal of a half is two, so that brings me right there. So here's two, and the same thing over here, right? We have some nice symmetry happening. So there we have some other points. So it is looking like it's linear. Um, over here, I have an intersection with the point, uh, or the, the line y equals two. The reciprocal of two is uh, one half, so that's right there. So yeah, I'm starting to think that this is a linear function. Um, and yeah, so same with, with right over here, I've got this intersection with uh, the line y equals two, so that would give me a point at a half right over here. So yeah, these are, uh, straight lines. So I'm going to connect these with my fancy ruler. It's actually not a ruler, it's a book or a notebook. Okay, so that looks good to me. Aha. Oops, I wasn't supposed to go that far. Let me undo that. And I'm going to just make these dots a little bit smaller. That way it doesn't look so derpy. Okay, um, okay, uh, that looks good, like this, and I will do this. Here we go. There's, it looks a little bit wavy, but that's fine. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Erase my big dots, don't need them to be that big. There we go, and then, oopsies. There we have it. Oops, oh, come on. Uh, all right, it is a little bit finicky because like one thing that you take for granted is friction. There's literally zero friction between a piece of paper and an iPad screen, uh, or at least what's displayed on the iPad screen. What I mean by that is that uh, if, you, like, if, uh, if you're placing your ruler down, you can still move the paper underneath it and it doesn't stick. Um, anyway. That's neither here nor there. Um, so here is the original function. That's what the original function looked like. I'm gonna sort of erase some of these lines. Um, so this, to me, looks like an absolute value function, right? It's like a, it's a V. So 
let's see if we can figure out what this absolute value function is. So it kind of looked like we could, it, it could be one of two things, right? It's one of two things. It's either the absolute value of this function, right? Of this linear function, it's the, it could be the absolute value of this linear function, right? Or, or it's the absolute value of this linear function, right? One of the, one of the other. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We can choose whichever one we want. Uh, and we'll just take the absolute value of it. I'm going to choose the positive one, right? The, the one with the positive slope. That's the one I'm going to choose. So this is the line. Well, if we extended this function down, it looks like the slope is one half, right? And it's got a y-intercept of negative a half. So this is the function y equals um, one half x minus one half and minus one half, and let's take the absolute value of it. That is the equation of the original function. So that was an absolute value function. So I really like that one because it kind of forces you to um, to use two, two ideas from this chapter, right? The idea of a absolute value function and the idea of a reciprocal. So um, looks like we're, we're kind of running out of time here. Um, so um, I think what I'm going to do for an exit slip, just keep it, again, keep it really simple. Um, what I want you to do for your exit slip is to tell me, the exit slip for today, uh, what are you leaning towards? Project or exam? What do you what do you think? Um, have you ha or have you decided? You could you could say maybe I'm undecided. Uh, that's totally fine too. I just want to get a sense of, of where you guys are, are leaning towards. Um, you know the project being a really interesting opportunity to be creative and to show your learning in in a way that you feel comfortable with at home. Downsides being uh, maybe it's a little bit daunting, right? It's a lot of work. You know, doing a project, a project is a project, right? Literally, project means something that takes a lot, well, maybe not the actual definition, but to me, project is synonymous with, with something that takes a lot of work. Like, um, you can almost use it as, a, like, derogatory, like, talking about a person as a project, right? Like, oh, that person is a project because, like, they require so much of my time and, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, projects can be, like, a lot of work. So um, maybe you're not interested in that. On the other hand, maybe, like, you've got a lot of time, I'm guessing. I guess a lot of you probably have jobs, and uh, um, I, I noticed uh, I've, I've been bumping into one of you uh, um, uh, at your job. I've, 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 I've seen one of our... Uh, class classmates at, at their job recently and uh, so I, I understand you know you guys have have jobs and, and and but at the same time you know this this a project would be a good way to you know fill fill up any time that you actually do have um, so I, I don't want to just tell you how much time you have you know how much time you have I don't um, but if you do have extra time then maybe a project could be a good thing to sort of fill that time um, and also maybe maybe it's it's something like you know, maybe you don't really like doing exams, which brings you to the exam portion, right? Like the positives of the exam is like it's one day, right? I mean, you prepare for it, you study, you study for, you know, probably a week, like a, a good, like uninterrupted hour a day, kind of uh, like deep, deep study sessions for about a week. And then you write it and then you're done, right? So it's, it's kind of like your hands are, are clean and you're just sort of, okay, uh, there you have it done. Um, Downsides being, you know, it's a little anxiety provoking, right? Nobody likes writing tests, uh, myself included. Um, and uh, also just there might be the extra layer of anxiety with uh, having to photograph your work in a specific time period. Um, so, so yeah, both of these have, have positives and negatives, but I'm, I'm hoping that the choice gives you enough leniency to, to feel okay about the final assessment. So um, so I'm, I'm really hoping that this is able to satisfy as, as many people as possible. Um, yeah, so let me know. What are you leaning towards? Um, I'm thinking sometime next week I'd like to actually have everyone sign up. I, I want people to actually make a final decision which which way they're going because I, I don't want people to be deciding at the last minute, right? Because you could kind of have this sort of situation where you're planning on doing a project, 
but then you kind of realize, wait, no, the project is actually a lot of work and I don't want to do it. And then you haven't studied for the exam and then it's like, oh no, right? Or the other way around, right? That you're thinking of doing the exam and then, you know, the day before you're like, you know what, it's just too, too nerve wracking. I got to do the project, but then now you've got a project to do in like 48 hours, right? So, um, you don't, you don't want to leave this to the last minute. And that's, that's why I'm sort of talking about this um, over a month before uh, either of these are due. So yeah, um, as for due dates and exam week, I still have not uh, um, heard uh, about exam week. I'm, I'm gonna just start asking maybe a few more people um, if they know. Um, but as far as I understand, I, I think it's kind of like the wild, wild west. Um, that's kind of the impression that I've been getting, but I, I do wanna just double check that I'm, I'm not gonna be, because I would hate to schedule an exam at the same time as another teacher. So um, I guess, uh, I guess I'll, I'll continue to look, look into it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to talk about. I have a feeling that there's one more thing. Oh yeah, um, I forget if it was a student from this class or another class. Um, I, think, I think it was the grade nine class. They're asking how to make PDFs. Um, so I'm gonna make a video, not a live video. I'll, I'll actually like sit down and edit it and everything. Um, it's been a while since I've actually edited a video. Um, I've kind of just been going all 100% live lately, but um, I'll make it sort of a, a prepackaged sort of a, um, video for all of my classes on uh, how to make a PDF because that's really important to know. Um, I'm gonna try to make it as accessible as possible in regards to like if you have a computer, if you have a, a, uh, a cell phone, uh, if, you have, if you're running Linux, if you are, the only thing that I don't have, I don't have an Android phone. Um, so uh, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, if you don't mind, I wonder if maybe I could actually uh, reach out to one of you. If, if one of you has an Android phone and has the ability to screen record, I wonder if, uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, working with me to, to help me make a video. So maybe in, in the Discord, um, if, if you're interested in uh, doing some, some help for me, uh, like no, no pressure, uh, like I don't, even, I don't even know who has an Android phone and who doesn't. So uh, it's quite possible that nobody does. I, I doubt it though. Uh, they are, um, I think in Canada, uh, Android actually is more popular than, than iPhone, uh, even though it, it Looking around, it seems like everyone has an iPhone, but I think actually the, the numbers reflect that more people have Android than uh, iPhones. So uh, if you do have an Android phone and you're interested in, in helping me out, it wouldn't it wouldn't really require too much of your time. It would just be like I would tell ask you to download uh, an app from the Google Play Store and um, maybe do like a quick screen recording of you downloading the app so you could so you could I could show someone how to search for the, the app that they need and then uh, and then screen record actually uh, doing a, a PDF thing uh, and the, 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 the tricky part is that I don't actually know like I would I would want to use um, Google Drive for that I think that that's probably the best one on Android for taking for making PDFs but um, yeah. Anyway, if you're interested in helping me out, uh, maybe send me a message on Discord, and um, and then and then maybe we can try to figure that out. But again, no pressure. Um, okay, I'm gonna go have a really great. Um, oh, I think I disappeared. Um, I must have. I probably disappeared on Discord, but I think you guys can still hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just closed the OBS window by accident. We're still streaming on YouTube. Anyway, yeah, have a good weekend, everyone. I know we went uh, over time a little bit, um, but I, th I think that was important information. Um, so, yeah, let me know. Project or exam, and uh, if you want to help out with the video, um, hit me up on the DMs, <laughs> as, you, as you say. Um, okay, bye-bye.